Okay, we should be live. Back, building more Arietti. Here she is again. And we're on the Brothers War this time. Since we're in the T's and we finished Tempest at the end of the previous stream. I started adding in the text for the cards, but I did not go back and look at um, auras that I might want to include that are more pacifism types than, um, whatchamacallit, than diminishing the creatures. Yeah, originally, the thought process was I want the opponents to be able to attack each other, but if we let them do that, then they're going to attack their creatures into the opponent's larger creatures, get the ones with the auras on them killed, and then we will lose the auras. And <clears throat> unless we really desperately wanted that creature off the table anyway, we're not really getting anything out of that, so... So I might have to go back and reconsider the actual pacifism type auras instead so that they can attack each other to death and we can win by draining them out instead yeah so far nothing in particular I'm interested in <clears throat> Yeah, none of these. There's some very minor temptation, so I didn't add in, um, well, we haven't gotten to all the glitters yet, but I haven't added that in, and I did not add in the other one. I can't think of the name. I've been looking at the promo one from the Year of the Rabbit, uh, APOC, um, promo cards. Because uh, there was one ending last night, and I still can't remember the name of it. It's the one from uh, Return of Ravnica that gives the creature plus one, plus one for each enchantment you control. <clears throat> but we do have Sage's Reverie, because that lets me draw a card for each aura I have attached to a creature when it comes in, in addition to pumping the creature. So I might want to consider those. And if I consider those, I might want the lands that make creatures unblockable, like Rogue's Primarily Rogue's Passage, because I don't think we can keep them small enough to start off with for the other thing to work, because I think that's power-based, not casting cost-based. <clears throat> but if we make the creatures unblockable, we can throw in, like, those three. And the thing that makes me think of that is I would want something like Fencing Ace, and we have... Is it this one that has... Yeah, the Combat Thresher at that point because it is a 3-mana 1-1 one, one double strike, so we could deal a ton of damage to a player that way to close out a game. Plus, it's another aura that we would have in play on it. And this one lets me draw a card when it comes in, which none of the other ones do, which is why I was thinking of that one. So we might be in the market for that. I have to see what we have first, though, and then decide if I want to go back and add that in. I don't need the puppeteer. Uh, probably don't need the command. Yeah. Can't run haywire might. Uh, return target artifact or creature. <clears throat> I mean, it makes sense. It's the Brothers War themed, so. Get into the trenches. Q2 Construct, plus one, plus one, counter creature gains double strike. Search my library for a planes card, gain two life, and scry two. Nope. Don't think we need Legions to Ashes as one of my mass removal spells. I think I need Loran either. Hmm, meh. The most useful thing about this is throwing it on a haste creature that the opponent just cast so they can't attack us with it. 
But I think we have a couple of other flash auras that we can do, and we also have the things that let me move auras around if I need to. <clears throat> and a couple of auras that will move themselves around if need be, so... Between all of that, I don't think we necessarily need a bad flash aura. Don't need Flesh Gorger, Platoon Dispenser. Definitely don't want the portal. I'll undo a lot of my hard work. Uh, enter Spellfield Scry 2, Enchant Creature can attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. I would rather have that than a regular pacifism, but I don't know that I need... Like, we have a bunch of <clears throat> arrests already in the deck. Then again, I think I have actual arrest on the list, so I suppose I would want Prison Sentence over that. <clears throat> Alright. Go to Brothers War. This is prison sentence. Two and away enchant aura goes on creatures. Which I've been adding to all these since I have so many different auras that go on so many different things. <clears throat> Except for the curses, because if it's a curse it goes on a player. That's just how curses work. There's no other thing it could be enchanting. <clears throat> Until they make curses, I can curse Planeswalkers also. Earth, Recruitment Officer. I need any of these. I Spell a spell cast by an opponent this way costs two more to cast. <clears throat> eh. Need static net. Other oh, survivors, symmetry matrix, error ballista, might stone and weak stone. Go to the vigil. Cracks a demon. Welcome no. Uh, choose six lands they control, destroy all other permanents, activate only as a sorcery. <clears throat> uh, put into exile from the battlefield. May pay two. If you do, search your library for a planeswalker card, reveal, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Don't need any of those, and we're at the end. Okay. The Brothers War, Brothers War Commander, which we shouldn't need anything from because they're all going to be artifact themed, except for those couple weird artifacts themselves that I don't ever seriously consider running, where you can like sacrifice a thing and then exile cards from the top of your deck. Enter the battlefield starting with you. Each player chooses up to five permanents they control. All permanents other than Disciple of Callus Nin that weren't chosen this way phase out. No. Makes Forest Dryads, Cares of Ive the Urzatron. Don't need the Scholar. That wire surgeons new. You start player, you create a tap power stone for each non land permanent that Gregor was put there this turn. No. And then we have a bunch of artifacts that I don't really need. Yep, yeah, okay. That was the Brothers War Commander. Brothers War Transformers, which shouldn't be anything, but just in case I'm forgetting what one of them does. Alright, <clears throat> we 
beginning of your end step, target opponent loses life equal to the amount of life that player lost this turn. If no life is lost this way, convert him. And begin combat on your turn. Choose flying or indestructible. Gains that ability until end of turn. When it deals combat damage to a player, flip it back over. <clears throat> and whenever another creature or vehicle enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1 1 counter on it. This is the second time this ability is resolved this turn. And then when it attacks, exile up to one target tapped creature or vehicle. For as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may play it. Whenever a player plays a card exiled with him, you draw a card and flip him back over. Gain life, flip him. When you do return target artifact with mana value less than or equal to the amount of life you gained. Yeah. Uh, control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield. Flip him over. Only once per turn he has lifelink. He has lifelink on both sides. And then Starscream cares about the monarchy. Okay. On to the dark. Mob, ashes to ashes. And train creature can't attack unless its controller pays three. Mm, <clears throat> uh, beginning of the upkeep of enchanted artifacts controller. Curse artifact deals two damage to that player unless they sacrifice that artifact. Nope. <clears throat> I was all for that right up until they had the option to sacrifice the enchanted artifact. Like I would rather have that than warp artifact so I can deal twice as much damage for only two colorless more mana. Don't need the knights. Mazes N or Mazes N, Maze of F. Wow. <laughs> Wrong set entirely. I don't need Preacher. Uh, I'd probably want to consider Skull of Orm. Even though it's very expensive to bring things back. It does actually let me bring things back. <clears throat> and a lot of my things are very cheap to begin with, so... Bringing them back and recasting them is not as difficult as it sounds like it should be. Still not amazing, though. Alright, so the dark... Onto the Lord of the Rings. There weren't that many auras in this set, were there? Not that I can think of. I don't need Andoral. Banish from Doris. If a creature died this turn. Eh. <clears throat> like, it's alright. Just as a land for value, but... We're not killing things as often, we're enchanting them instead, and basically trying to keep them alive, actually, so. <clears throat> uh, creatures you control gain indestructible, the ring ten. Uh, don't need Dawn of the New Age. Denethor. No, no, no. It only affects equip costs. A return target equipment car. Yeah, it's all equip things. Yeah. <clears> hey. <throat> okay. Attach target equipment. Yeah, don't care about that. Frodo. Don't think I need Gandalf.
guys may put in its owner's library fifth from the top. Don't do that Gandalf either. <coughs> Excuse me. Go to Golem. Deal that card. If they guess right, remove Golem from combat. Otherwise, you draw a card and Golem can't be blocked this turn. Nope. Light. Gothmog. Gondor, Horn of the Mark. King of the Oathbreakers. Comes a target of a spell, it phases out. Uh, phases in, create a tap spirit token. Nope. Flash. Don't actually need Lotho for anything. Again, Nazgul, no. Both, One Ring, Rich Bowmasters, Palantir. Uh, target creature and opponent controls gets minus three, minus three. If that creature is legendary, its controller loses three life. When the ring tempts, you return from your graveyard to your hand. Rosie. Desperate Rescue, Sam himself, not that he would be terrible in the deck being able to buy back one of the enchantments when it goes to the graveyard, but I don't think I actually need it. Snarling Warg, Sting, no, what else we got? actually need the one ring we could run the one ring because we're gaining so much life potentially from Arietti that we should be able to keep up with it for a while and we just need to find one of the things that can actually get rid of it or bounce it or reset it I don't want the witch king I don't think Yeah, I don't think there was any auras in this set at all. Don't seem to have been in our color combination. All right. They kind of gloss over. What did Minas Tirith do again? I forget what its actual effect is. Draw a card if I attack with two or more creatures. Okay. Yeah, I was blanking on the actual effect of it. And I just kind of glossed over it because it was a land and that wasn't what I was actively looking at at the time. Since none of the lands were of interest to me except for those two, all of the rest of them, I was just going to... Don't you sass me. Go back to Scryfall. Hey. Okay. Herbs and stewed rabbit. 1-1 one, one counter, create a food, draw a card, create a food. 1-1 one, one halfling for each food you control. If you gain three or more life this turn, the ring tempts you. Then if Frodo is your ring bearer and the ring has tempted you two or more times this game, draw a card. Another human enters the battlefield. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have vigilance. I become the monarch. I'm the monarch. That opponent may pay X, where X is the number of cards in their hand. If they don't, they can't attack you this combat. <clears throat> Create a food token. And make a halfling and attach the frying pan to it. X is the amount of life you gain this turn. Yeah, unfortunately, most of my life gain happens at the beginning of my end step, so a lot of these things, like the gaffer, can't ever trigger, even if we do have three or more R's in play. 
Exile another target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. If you don't, at the beginning of your next end step, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control with a vigilance counter and a lifelink counter on it. Ooh. Attacking creature gains flying until end of turn. If I gain three or more life, I make things. I can also give flying until end of turn. Tap tire creature and opponent controls at the beginning of your upkeep, make a 1-1. One, one. Eh. Beginning of your end step, each opponent dealt combat damage this game by a creature named Golem, Obsessed Stalker. Loses life equal to the amount of life I gained this turn. He does still have to be in play for that, though, so... Is only a 1-1? One, one. Yeah, I don't think so. Like, we will be gaining life, but... We have to... Have him come into play, have him live. Although he just... Ha oh no, he does have to deal damage to a player in order for that to trigger too, so he won't even do anything the turn that we play him if he doesn't gain haste from something. Yeah, not at all thrilled. Uh, top card of each player's library and exile those cards face down. Sacrifice an artifact. No. Create a food token, sack of food, put a 1-1 one, one counter on the guest. Leaves the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to its power. Creature opponent controls, dies, exile it. Black and two, put a creature card exiled with Sholeb into its owner's graveyard. Put two 1-1 one, one counters on her and draw a card. Or put target creature with mana value X exiled with her onto the battlefield tapped under my control. The Crown of Gondor, I don't think. Don't need the rope. Don't need the blade. Or the model. Choose a player with the most life or tied for the most life. Tired creature can't be blocked by creatures that player controls this turn. Unfortunately, we will probably have the most life, so that's not actually helping anything. It's the Lord of the Rings commander. Theros. I don't need Abhorrent Overlord. Cast a spell that targets Agent of the Fates. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. Nope. <clears throat> a big old no. Baleful Eidolon. Yeah, I don't actually need that one. Erebos, no. Giant creature gets plus two, plus two, and has Intimidate. Plus four, plus four, flying in first strike. Uh, chosen by Heliod enters the battlefield, draw a card, and gives plus zero, plus two. So it's the updated version of uh, the Tempered Steel or whatever. Wait, isn't Tempered Steel the plus two, plus two? Um, it's the one from Mirage Block that... Oh wait, hang on, it's called Chosen by Heliod, not Heliod's ever. Fight, chant, aura for creatures. Alright, chain to the rocks, we won't have any mountains. Dark Betrayal, Dauntless Onslaught, Erebos. Does stop our opponents from gaining life. Let's us draw cards. 
Um. Don't know how much I would need it though. Don't need the emissary. Don't think I need Erebos to stop opponents from gaining life. A gift of immortality. When enchant creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Return Gift of Immortality to the battlefield attached to that creature at the beginning of the next end step. So it comes back, but only if that creature is in play. Yeah, it's kind of underwhelming. At first I thought we were going to run this because I knew it could cut, like the gift itself could come back also, but... Given that it has to go back to play on that creature, kind of underwhelming. Heliod's Emissary. Hopeful Eidolon, no. Organs. Whip, no. Broader. X is the number of creature cards in all graveyards. Target player discards two cards and sacrifice it. I gain 10 life. Yeah, I don't think I need either of the ordeals. Phalanx leader. Texas of Pandemonium, no. Rescue, no. No. Sentry. Life, no. From Multicolored, Sphere of Heliod. The Temples. Pride of the Fates. Exile target creature that has a fate counter on it. Return to the battlefield. Exile target creature that has a fate counter on its controller draws two cards. Nope. Only stops activated abilities too. That's not even that impressive. And Yoke Docks. I didn't pass anything with Heroic that I... Should have been paying attention to, right? That's the 1-1 one, one counters guy. I think it was before this. I wasn't super paying attention to the creatures with Heroic because I kind of forget that I would have a bunch of stuff that could target them if I needed to. So if the ability is really relevant... And all damage will be dealt to it this turn. It gets a counter. Double striking gets a counter. Okay, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, I kind of stopped after reading the Agent of Fates for a while. And it's like, no, I should still be reading these. These are relevant. That was Theros. On to Theros Beyond Death. Then Throne of Eldraine. Uh, reveals their hand. No. Creature or enchantment gains protection. No. Exile enchantment card from my graveyard, make a 2-2 zombie token, no. Guys, I may return an enchantment card from the battlefield, from my graveyard to the battlefield. Constellation makes a 2-2 flyer. That one might actually be worth it. 
I do have a few other things that trigger when I cast an enchantment. Oops, we are in Theros. This is Archon of Sun's Grace. It's two white, white, or an Archon. Three, four. Aspect to the Lamprey. Target opponent discards two cards and train creature has lifelink. Meh. And when a creature with a coin counter on it dies. No. And a top target creature. No. Cling to dust. Plus two, plus two has first strike, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, create a one one. Nope. Whenever a creature dies, if an aura you control was attached to it, return target creature card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to your hand. Nope. Whenever another creature you control enters or dies, gain one life. White. Sacrifices a creature. No. Can't attack or block. Three mana exile enchanted creature. No. Creature gets plus two plus zero. Loyalty abilities of planeswalkers can't or cost one more rather. He conquers death, I don't think. For her nightmare. I uh, don't need that Erebos or his intervention. Uh, favorite of Eroas gains double strike. Nope. Eh. It's not terrible since I would get to reattach the aura, and you can kind of shenanigans that with um, hexproof and shroud, but uh, gets plus zero plus one. No, sell that creature until the giant leaves the battlefield. No. Whenever an enchanted creature dies, draw a card for each aura you control that was attached to it. That one I might be down for. So, this is Hate Flightalon. An enchant creature. That's how I abbreviate. Enchantment creatures. I don't know. I put the creature type, so it's enchant spirit. One, two. One, three, one, two. Okay. This was a reprint, right? From 2015, yeah. Uh, with four task counters on it, enchanted creature can't attack or block, it loses all abilities and has tap, remove a task counter from it. Then if there are no task counters on it, destroy it. Yep. Don't need the two heroes, we already have Idyllic Tutor. Indomitable Will, Inevitable End. As at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. Nope. Vigilance Menace Lifelink. Uh, no. Put target enchantment card from your graveyard on top of your library if you do gain life equal to its mana value. Probably not. Well, Minion's Return is a card I already had on the list, but better since it has flash, so... Enchant. Uh, yeah, we probably don't need Myers Grasp if I'm not going to be running the other things. 
Although an aura that escapes. Eh. It's alright, but ultimately a little on the underwhelming side. Shepherd, the omens. This one plus one. No. It's one ones. Scry one. No. Turn target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Return target aura from your graveyard to the battlefield. That one's close. Getting back one of my creatures that can get back other stuff and getting an aura back to my... Actually, not back to my hand. Back to play. Maybe? Maybe I'm down for Rise to Glory. White sorcery. Sentinel's Eyes is even fewer cards to escape, but still probably not. Creature draw a card. Lifelink. Noted. Gideon's Fangirl. It is. Aura spells cost one less to cast. I have a bunch of other things that reduce the casting cost of my enchantments. I suppose there's a chance where I want this one. What is its name? Transcendent Envoy? Transcendent. Since it's cheaper than, like, the Pegasus, for example, maybe I want this one instead. That's the only reason I can see for putting it on the list is almost all of my stuff is auras, so... It being one mana cheaper to get down itself means I get my auras down that much faster. Don't see anything else. Loss over anything? Nope, doesn't look like it. Alright, back we go then. So that's beyond death. Next up is uh, Throne of Eldrain. I control another knight, reveal knight, aura, equipment, or legendary artifact. I don't think I have enough knights. I'm not going to add a bunch more now, I don't think. Yeah, right now I have Zenk, Paladin Unbroken. Yeah, if I decide I want to run this combination of cards, I'll come back and add all that glitters. Unless the controller pays one. Paladin. Need Ayara. Cow, no. Bell Brawl. Princess. Ardenvale, Castle Lockthwain, Charming Prince, Smith Swordmaster, no, Foretold, no, because that will let them sacrifice things. I don't know why I was about to start reading that, I kind of knew what it did. Bit of Forever Young, Fortifying Provisions. No. Happily Ever After. 
Hushbringer. Knight's Charge, no Linden. Bokthwain, Lost Legion. No. Technically need Murderous Rider. If I need more removal, I can come back and add him. Our Knight, Rally for the Throne, Rankle, no. Lifelink and gains Indestructible. Revenge of Ravens. Encounter on each creature you control. No. Spectre Shriek, Stone Coil Serpent. For each other creature you control, or no, each other creature you control gets plus one plus one. Conrad, Tempting Witch, Circle of Loyalty, Legends, Trapped in the Tower. No. Nope. Okay. Throne. Time spiral. All right, time spiral. What have you got for me? I don't need any rebels. Bill's Grace. Or, yeah, call to the netherworld. Nope, had it right the first time. Guess myself. I don't need the Crusader, Chromatic Star, Chrono Savant, Chaser Kestrel, New. Creatures activate abilities can't be activated. White and one attach the tainment spell to target creature. Yeah, we can do better than that. It is nice that I can move it around, but that's about it. The creature has sacrifice a creature. This creature gets plus two, plus one until end of turn. If it was sacrifice a creature, enchanted creature gets plus two, plus one until end of turn, I would absolutely be running this because it can bounce back to my hand. If I put it on... That again, if I put it on their creature and they sacrifice the enchanted creature to its own ability now... It just kills their creature, and I do get the aura back. The downside is they can sacrifice any of their other creatures with auras on them. Like, I do want this effect, the aura that comes back to my hand when it dies, but this one I think is just too bad with how our deck wants to function. It's not doing the right thing. If we were going to definitely put it on our own creature all of the time... For value then yes but since we're planning on putting it on the opponent's creature don't think so yeah no to griffin guide magi mangare of corindor No. Opal Guardian, Outrider and Core. 
Use a color, enter this battlefield, draw a card, and train creatures, protection from the chosen color, and that can't remove Pentarch Ward. It's tempting because it draws a card. So I guess. Yes. Pentarch Ward, two and a white. Plated Pegasus, Psychotic Episode. Hmm. I do like Return to Dust, so I will consider it. Or Skulking Knight, Smallpox. Oh, Spirit Loop. There we go. It's Spirit Link, not Life Link. That'll work. Light, Enchant, Aura, Sure. Yeah, if it were actually lifelink, then that would also be a problem, since it's not. It gets to be fun and do the cool thing. An enchanted creature has shadow. Prevent all damage will be dealt by enchanted creature. And it has flash. Chant for a creature. Yeah, since almost no decks run things with shadow, that just leaves it unable to attack effectively and unable to block at all. More or less. The other things okay it's time spiral format don't need the trooper bone shard slasher surgeon Edict, no. I have seven more cards in my graveyard. Instead, destroy all enchantments and return all cards. My graveyard destroyed this way to the battlefield. Yeah, I'm not super thrilled with that one. Yeah, I don't need floating shield, frantic purification, no. Andrea, no. Icarid, Insidious Dreams. Stupid Fiend. Morning Tide, Mortal Kombat. Mutilate. Nomad. All right. There is no other possessed creature. Or white black. So the only thing is the vampire from Odyssey. Don't need Psychotic Haze, Rancid Earth. Reborn Hero no. Form Stalker. Strength enchantments. 
life. Uh, enters the battlefield. Creatures you control gain protection from black. No. <clears throat> Hinge. Venf vengeful dream. Zombie trailblazer. Yep. Oh, okay. It's torment. Oh, joy. Infinity. That will probably be the last thing that we do. <clears throat> Since we're at 50 minutes now, and this will take a little bit. Um, yeah, it's true. Maybe it won't take that long, because I don't really care about the attractions. I don't think there are that many auras that are, you know, non-acorn-based. I don't even know that there were that many that were acorn based, so. Yeah, the modifications in this set are mainly stickers, so there are less auras to do things with, and I don't care about any of the rides, because none of them are going to be aura based, so. Mm. Yeah, these are all cards that care about attractions. Except for the dissatisfied customer, but I don't really need him either, so. And the line cutter. Night shift, tickets and stickers, other sticker thing, <clears throat> open an attraction, open an attraction, tickets and stickers, stickers, that creature dies this way, its controller creates two tokens that are copies of that creature except their base power is half that creature's power, and same for base toughness. Round up each time. Yeah, don't need Scampire, Scared Stiff, Soul Swindler. Right up. Hammer, Swallowing Seraph, Love, any of these stickers, Blind Clothing, Xeno Squirrels, nope, okay. What is after Infinity? Ooh, then we get into the Urzas. All right, I'm going to call it there then. We're almost at the hour mark, and I'd rather do the Urzas block together since we're going to get, like, the Rancor-style enchantments from those sets. So that'll do it for me for now. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Good rest of your day.